If you're looking at memes on the internet or uh, trying to email your boss about why you can't make it to work, then your email and your data is traveling through one of many data centers situated around the globe. We are at Yota NM1 right outside of Navi Mumbai and it happens to be Asia's largest tier 4 certified data center. And we are going to give you an all access tour through this data center so that you can understand exactly what happens inside one. So, Mithun, I'll start with the facility first. Mm -hmm. So, right now we have two data center buildings here, out of which only one is uh, live, that is NM1. And uh, for security purpose, we have covered this entire premises with an electrical fencing. So, we have 14 feet of electrical fencing. And if you go close enough, you will see a fine horizontal wire running across its perimeter, which has got 9000 volts of supply in it. So typically, anywhere near 400 volts is fatal. But what we are doing is we are pulsating it for 2 milliseconds. Okay. So you just get a heavy shock, but not long enough to kill you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much <laughs> for considering the lives of criminals. <laughs> so in entire perimeter, you have only two openings. The first one is the main gate here, which is meant for human entry. So you can enter using a car or you can come walking, in which case you have to use that turnstile, which has an access card system. So only if you have access, you can enter through enter the facility. Then on this gate and on the cargo gate, we have a face detection camera, a number plate detection camera and an under vehicle scanning system, which is all operated by a pressure sensor. So when a moment a car comes or any vehicle comes, automatically all of these three systems are activated. Okay. They, they will capture a photo of the driver, a photo of the number plate and uh, and that slot over there you see that will take us a, a scan of the underbelly of the vehicle and that will be uh, displayed uh, in the monitor over there in that cabin and the security guard will check whether if there's any suspicious thing like a bomb or anything sticking to the underbelly and only if he, if, if he clears it then the vehicle can pass through so this building requires 50 megawatts of power which we are taking from a nearby Tata, Tata power station which I'll show you when we go on terrace the Tata power station itself takes two different sources of power. One is coming from all the way from the Khopoli and the other is coming from the Chembur. Okay. They are totally different sources. It's a very rare that both of, them, both of them will go down. But if it happens, then we have 11 diesel generators here, each having a capacity of 2.25 megawatt. So a typical house in India consumes around 200 kVs in a month. So this single DG can power around 11,000 house for a month. And, and we have 11 of them. And how much fuel does it require to keep these things running? So when the whole building goes live, we will be needing around 32 diesel generators. Right now we have 11, but we'll need around 32. And to power those 32 diesel generators, we'll need around 6 lakh liters of diesel. Wow. So behind me, there is a diesel yard. It's a high speed diesel storage. There are eight underground, underground tanks there, each having a capacity of 75,000 liters. So we can store a total of 6 lakh liters of diesel at a time which can power 32 diesel generators for minimum 48 hours. And considering diesel is like what nearly 100 rupees at 6 crore rupees worth of fuel that you have right now. So the thing is, yes, we have a lot of diesel stored in. And uh, the thing is, sometimes there's a chance that if you store a diesel for a long enough time, it turns into a jelly. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you can see it from here. There are two uh, some teal, teal blue cylinders you can see there. Yes, yes. So these are two fuel polishing kits we have. So what we do after a certain period of time, we pass all of the diesel through that polishing kit. So it will remove all those dirt or jellyish material from it. It refines the diesel and it goes back into the storage. So it's keeping the diesel prepped for whenever it's needed. Yes. Even if we need to extend power beyond 48 hours, we have a contract with nearby fuel pumping station. So if when we call them, they have to su supply us more fuel within six to, six to eight hours. And so the power backup can be extended beyond 48 hours as well. Now, typically rats love wires and there are a lot of wires in data centers. So what happens when rodents get into your data center? Good question. So to protect our data center from rodent, what we have done is all the openings which are big enough for a rat to enter the facility, right from the basement up to the second floor, we have closed it using this wire mesh you can see here. 
so they have no chance of entering the facility through any hole even the pipes uh oh, pipe openings are closed with the wire mesh okay so they cannot even enter through the pipes even if they somehow manage to enter the facility they are in for a disappointment okay because for all the power supply uh, that we are doing into the facility all the way up to the pdu is done by the bus trunking system you can see up there oh, so there right. are no cables that we are using for power supply everything okay. is done using the bus ducts and which they these, can chew through do these happen to be electrified as well no no good heavens so this one room in this entire facility that takes going green to a whole new level it's this room and if you see the red color or any streak of red in this room then it sends hearts racing we are in the bms and they wonder can you take us through what all of these massive screens mean and what they indicate okay so for those who don't know what a bms is bms is a building monitoring system so this is the room from where we are monitoring our entire facility so it, what we are monitoring is it can be as simple as your temperature at a particular location or it can be as complicated as how much the efficiency of a power consumption in a particular machine etc so there are more than like 350 different pages on this system which is again designed by schneider electric uh through which we can uh, monitor different parameters so for example take a example of a server flow uh where we where the temperature and humidity is a very essential uh, or a critical parameter that we need to monitor so we are monitoring uh, we are doing a live monitoring of those parameters through this system so any time uh, any parameter goes out of the given safe range it generates an alarm it turns red uh this is a 24 into 7 so all the time we have a shift lead and a team of four engineers sitting here okay any time anything goes out of the given range generates alarm they will rush to the place and solve the problem even if it is a false alarm it is treated as a true alarm for safety and can you sort of individually turn off racks from this place no there is no control in this room because imagine if someone hacks into the system some day he can close he can shut down the entire data center if he wants to i was actually planning on doing that maybe i'll spill a bottle of water and one of these keepers that'll turn things around <laughs> so there is this is for purely monitoring purpose mm -hmm. we don't do any control from here the only control we have here is uh, at these two boxes which are meant for w water leak detection and okay. fuel leak detection okay. from here we can turn on and turn off walls that's it that flow you see uh, on the third screen that is the server flow which is divided into five different server halls out of which the third is the largest server hall in in a co-location data center you can find in india it has a ideal capacity of 800 racks 800 racks and all of these are 48u or 58u 48u and the screen right beside it is the is the floor layout of the utility floor which is the power floor what we have done in this facility is uh, we have separated power equipment from the server so all the odd floors in this facility like third fifth seventh and so on they are all power floor which supply power to the floor above it so the third will supply power to the fourth floor which is server floor there will be no power equipment except power distribution unit over there nothing else so it's a massive sandwich yeah. of sorts yes yeah. so these two uh, floors acts as an in individual data center okay. anything happening to one floor will not impact the other and uh, you have independent power and networking to every single floor yes. i believe that's something called an a or b side yes so every floor in this facility is divided into a side and b side and uh, it's just for convenience to you know distinguish between them uh, but what it indicates is that a single uh, any equipment which is only belongs to a side or b side is uh, is capable enough to run that flow the other side just give provides uh, redundancy to it okay so if i were to accidentally again drop a bottle of water on through let's say one of the ups racks then the data center is not going down right yeah yeah all right it's going to go down <laughs> there are obviously a lot of screens in this room and it can get quite overwhelming so if a lay person were to come in and let's say start working here and you had to point out the most important screens out of all of these which would those be um i would say these two screens okay. uh, the first screen you see here is it is the floor layout of the third floor uh, which is our utility floor so this is where our data center starts from so this floor is responsible for powering the fourth floor of which of layout is again on the second screen you see here okay so these two pair act as an individual data center what we have on the third floor is we have six different ups rooms and their dedicated battery rooms 
three on A side, three on B side. Now the A or B side is alone capable of supplying power to the fourth flow. The other acts as a redundancy. And again, it's a uh, it's a active redundancy. What active redundancy means is that sometimes you have one source live and the other is off. When the one fails, the other starts, which is and that is called passive redundancy. In active redundancy, both your sources are live. Only they are just sharing the load with each other. Okay. So when the one fails, other takes the entire load. All right. That's what we are doing here. So if I were to again spill water on one of the UPS racks, you know then I'm spilling water. On yes. <laughs> then it just the other one just kicks in and handles the entire load without any worry. Yeah. All right. So welcome to the fourth floor, which just happens to be our server floor. It has five different server halls, which can host up to the twelve hundred racks. The one you see right behind me is the server hall three. Which is the largest server hall you can find in a four location type data center in entire India. It has a capacity of 800 racks. The machine you out you see outside, it, the technical name for it is Pahu machine. I'll simplify it for you. You have a AC in your home. It has got one or half or two ton capacity. Uh, that that is the cooling capacity we measure. If you don't know what is turning, you can just Google it. You'll know about it. These machines you see, these have a capacity of 38 tons. These are the machines responsible for cooling the servers inside the server hall. These machines are pumping, are pumping the chilled air at 22 degrees Celsius inside the server hall. They are doing it using the chilled water. The chilled water is actually coming from the two different pipelines. That is the A side supply and the B side supply. And every power machine gets one supply from the A side and the other from the B side. Again, this is done for the redundancy purpose. If one goes down, the other will supply water. To the power machine and it will keep running. One more thing is all these power machines are UPS powered. So even if in, uh, in case of power failure, they would not stop running. Moreover, all these power machines have a, have a two cooling coils inside them. If one fails, the other keeps the uh, process of cooling the air keep running. It doesn't stop. So now we are in the security control area or security control room where uh, the entire facility security is handled and by the way, this facility has 600,000 liters or 6 lakh liters of diesel. A lot of sensitive data or I could say priceless data. We have with us Mr. Sambhaji Nayak who actually heads the entire security for the facility. Uh, Mr. Sambhaji, could you actually go through all the things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis in this security room? So right now we are standing in a central control room or we call this as a command center. And presently we are monitoring around uh, 400 plus cameras. So right now what you see on the screen are all our, all our cameras which are displayed, it's, you know, it's a tile, so they'll keep on rotating. So on the on my right hand side, which is the first screen and three screen, first three screens are with the uh, red zone cameras, those are server hall cameras. And then going forward, we have got a perimeter periphery cameras, we have got PTZ cameras on the top of this building, which can zoom up to 1.5 kilometers. And then we have got our uh, common area cameras, which are uh, green area cameras. The last screen on the top here is our access control uh, screen, which gives me a real time logs or a transactions which are happening in this building. So that shows me how many people are moving this currently in this building, where are they moving now. And in the case of emergency, when we assemble in the assembly area, this can help me in the head count. So, so you actually knew we were coming? Yes. So, so let's say if I were a criminal and I wanted to sort of um, maybe steal a couple of hard drives or some liters of yeah. diesel fuel. Uh, what all measures do you have to sort of stop people like me from entering the facility? So there are seven layers of security which you have to pass to come to the server hall. So it's not easy to get into that or, 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 or penetrate that all the systems. So right from the gate you can see a security checkpoint where we are issued some lanyards, different color of lanyards. From there, you walk to a server data center entry, where you will be again frisked. Your baggage will be scanned. Then you report into the reception, where reception will be scanned again. Your cards will be checked, your identification cards will be checked. And then you pass through our tripods, which are on the reception area. Then you go to the uh, elevators, you walk through elevators, land in, in our uh, server hall reception, where you will be frisked again, will be scanned again. Your, your barcode, your cards will be scanned again. And then you are let inside. There is a man trap which you have to pass. So no, no tail getting promoted. Each access card will have access to that server hall. So if you the your card doesn't work, you will not be able to go inside. And the access will get denied. You will get blocked inside. 
that is how the complete system so it's not very easy to easy to penetrate our system so i can't simply get a couple of different color lanyards stitched no. and so those are very you'll get someone yes those lanyards are very much controlled it's in the custody of security officer who is on duty uh, and they are counted for and then end of the day we reconcile also whether all the lanyards which were issued were are back so humko matlab nobody will go with the lanyard on okay. that is how the system works and do you have some rfid tracking system or anything RFID like that rfid for access card here yeah. all our uh, proximity card readers which are on all the entry points scans your card so whenever you punch a card on that uh, reader you i will get a real time log or transaction happening where mr mithun is moving in my facility similarly applies for our employees also we have a, a process which will prevent any kind of intrusion which is uh, you know uh, very very common things now you know we have a facility which is away from the main city and a lot of villages surrounding us so that's the reason we have installed our one more layer of security that is the power fence uh, over and above we have got ptz cameras on the top of this building which keep on monitoring our vicinity and our patrolling team which always are on the round so physical security team a team of around 60 plus people 24 by 7 operational so they keep on moving and we track their movements also so that is how we keep monitor to this kind of threat any material which is coming inside is scanned through one of the device uh, we have a special device known as edk so okay. this uh, device uh, is used to uh, identify any kind of threats like for explosives or narcotics which are been transported to our facility so security officer on duty will scan all the packages which are coming inside so that is actually a main threat for us yeah and this threat is mitigated or risk is mitigated at the gate itself So, if you see a 200 meter ka stand-off distance from our main building, we have a, a a security booth over there, a dedicated security officer sitting there who will scan all the packages which are coming inside. So, this is an American device used by U.S. Marines. It's known as Seeker, and it's uh, we are the only data center in India using this device currently because the cost is uh, around 36 lakhs wow. million rupees. Wow. Okay. It's a vandal-proof device. You cannot break it. It is military grade. U.S. by uh, used by U.S. Marines. and uh, it's gps enabled you have 1 lakh reports stored in this device right now i can download it whenever required it in a form of a uh, pdf format or excel format is required register with oem we have to or oem has to uh, keep connected to our us embassy also saying that we are using it for the right right purpose right purposes okay has there any instance been of uh, false reports like let's say if i bought a vada pav didn't touch it for 5 days it's smelling nasty will this thing detect that no, it's only it will detect any and every kind of explosives and narcotics that are, that are present on the earth now okay. other than that it won't be i think yes. so, so my vada power safe so yes uh, uh, as i was mentioning you uh, we have around 404 cameras out of this 404 cameras around 105 critical cameras which are in the red zone are is uh, we have artificial intelligence software enabled to that cameras artificial intelligence means if somebody is uh, loitering in the facility which is not supposed to be like you said that an authorized person mm -hmm. or intruder who has accessed our facility somebody have kept a bag at a reception area for a long time someone has is sitting there two hours doing nothing this thing somebody trying to trip over the wall these are all events picked up by the camera and then are popped up on the screen of a security operator so the person operator has to action on that the response mechanism is that he has to inform the security supervisor on duty through our walkie talkie system communication system and then he will go and respond to that particular call so this artificial intelligence system also identifies if there is a mob attack okay for example if more than 10 people gather on my gate so there will be alert which will be raised by the camera at the same time we have a panic switch which is active at our main entry which the operator presses that and we have a audible alarm over here so i get alert beforehand till the mob reaches first thing it will not reach here because we have a power fence lot of controls over there metal gates and then there is 200 meter stand off distance and then we have own building gates also so it is not but then we can respond to that so i can call the police i can call the local whatever if there is a mob attack or a terrorist attack also so these are the mechanism available with us all right and the recording of footage of these cameras are for 90 days so we retain this data for 90 days which will get overlap later on on your own data yes. centers yes for data centers yeah. and if if customer requires for more than that we can extend it to the All number right. of uh, days or maybe years also oh wow so this camera this uh, footage of uh, you if you see, ask me the under vehicle scanning system data or the number plate recognition uh, system 
का जो बैकअप है इट इज स्टोर फॉर वन ईयर वन कम्प्लायस The security arrangements mitigate a lot of things that can go wrong at a data center, but things can still go sideways, such as a fire breaking out in the server hall. So, what if any of the rooms in our data center catches fire? Of course, we can put it out using uh, a water or a fire extinguisher. But the problem is, it will also damage the equipment, which was uh, some in corrodes. So, in order to avoid that, we are using a gas suppression system. that is gss all this cylinders you see behind me there is a gas called novec 1230 which is uh, integrated with the smoke detectors detectors we have so the moment the smoke detectors detects smoke it will trigger the system and within 10 seconds the room will be filled with the novec 1230 which will put out any kind of fire without damaging the equipment and what happens when someone is caught inside the room when the gas begins dispensing that's a very good question well to in order to avoid that what we have done is we have put a time delay between the alert going to the novec system and actual gas discharge that is 1 minute 60 seconds anyone inside the room has to get out of the room there is a hooters uh, and uh, flashes also a gas discharge sign which all turn on and give anyone inside the room uh, indication that they have to get out of the room and are the fumes toxic no but a, but a, but there's a chance that person might so Up next is Ankita Shevale, a data center operations associate, to take us through the cooling management solution in place for the Yota NM1. So, cooling plays a very important role in data center as every equipment is being cooled to some temperature. We are maintaining the server halls at 22 plus minus 2 degrees Celsius, and to achieve that, we have a huge water distribution system over here. In case of power failure, we DG take some time to start. and till that duration we have this huge thermal storage tanks over here which have been operated by the secondary pumps right behind me in case of power failure this secondary pumps will be powered by the upis on the ground floor and the water from the thermal storage tanks will be given to the server hall floor so right now we are on the chiller platform so what you see behind me is the chillers these chillers are data center specific chillers and has a restart time of 120 seconds we need power to run all the equipments and that power is coming from our own substation which we have over here we get two sources from kopuli and chembur which is brought to brought down to 11 kva in tuko and we get two sources from tuko in the building we get n plus n redundancy for the power supply so just like power network is another most important factor for a data center we have four fiber paths coming in the data center two from the old mumbai pune highway and two from the new mumbai pune express way so we have four paths two from this side two from this side coming in the data center now we are at the end of our tour of the yota nm1 data center and we find ourselves in the mock which is network operation center and with us we have mr kalam who actually has this particular shift of the mock Uh, Mr. Kalam could you take us through what a mock is and what all is happening we see a lot of screens on the back Can right. you also tell us what they are showcasing right now? Sure. So, as you rightly said, so this is our uh, network operations center for the uh, data center that we have hosted over here. So, basically, a NOC area is is just an extended version of the data center uh, from where the actual uh, troubleshooting of issues happens. Uh, so, as you can see in front of me, uh, we have different uh, screens in front of us. So, all these screens are nothing but uh, the, the the monitoring that happens from the NOC. so we have our monitoring done right from uh, our network monitoring to uh, our ticket monitoring or email monitoring so we have our uh, websites which are getting monitored uh, we have our uh, security uh, uh, screens as well uh, basically the security screens are uh, you know for monitoring the uh, the sock part of the uh, uh, the knock uh, we have our uh, cloud monitoring which is which is happening over here uh so so on and so forth so a lot of other monitoring which which happens from the knock area and if you can see we have uh, different uh, domain teams also sitting over here so we have uh, members of our network team our uh, cloud team database uh, team we have uh, backup storage then we have our uh, systems team sitting over here and uh, myself uh, also you know uh, sits in the same place so this place is operational 24/7 so any issues uh, which our customers face uh they can log a ticket with us so we get the ticket assigned to the network uh, uh ticket assigned based uh, basis the uh, issue and then uh, try to get those uh, issues resolved so, so what role does the knock right. or the sock play uh, in mitigating cyber security attacks 
so we uh, basically try to you know uh, categorize the issue uh, into different severities so for us any attack is definitely going to be a major uh, severity issue so any major issue uh, which which happens in the in the uh, customers infra that for us uh, that is a high priority uh, situation uh, we have to uh, you know be be on our toes and get that issue resolved uh, with, with uh, you know with minimum minimum uh, impact to our customers and uh, at the same time uh, try and uh, resolve that issue uh, as quick as possible so that qualifies uh, i mean any attack uh, which is in the infra that qualifies to be a severity one issue for us so we have to get it resolved within within a uh, uh, short duration of time we are back in the studio in mumbai ironically because while we were shooting the video we ran out of data storage space at a data center <laughs> Now that joke probably did not land but anyways what you saw was the whole deal everything from the stringent security arrangements for the facility as well as for the data the power backups for the data center as well as the power backups for the power backups and then we saw the massive cooling system before finally checking out the facility management room being a tier 4 certified data center the yota nm1 is a great example of everything that goes into a data center and india needs hundreds of such data centers in the coming years but don't take our word for it listen to mr sunil gupta the data center man of india who has nearly 3 decades of experience and has set up more than 15 hyperscale hyper density data centers stay tuned for our interview with mr sunil gupta on this very channel and yes now you reach the end of this really long but hopefully informative video That's it from us. So here a digit. We'll catch you in the next one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.